What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams, coming back to you from the Reef Builder Studio, and uh, waited a few weeks to bring you a highlight reel of the first ever Reef of Palooza in Chicago. This was by far the largest coral reef saltwater dedicated aquarium event that Chicago's ever seen. And uh, man, Reef Palooza did a great job. Um, Chicago's always been kind of a unique scene, like a kind of a specific market, because I remember traveling to Chicago a lot more in the past, and I remember the things that I would find there were really different from what you would find from New York to California to Florida. So um, it's really cool to see the Chicago Reef Aquarium scene get its own Reef of Palooza. And uh, I actually flew in that morning, um, just uh, couldn't make it out the night before, so I showed up like right when everything was popping off. Um, but I waited to shoot uh, until the, the, the crowds thinned out a little bit because there was a lot of people there. Uh, Brightwell Aquatics, an amazing display, worldwide corals. Um, again, this is probably a few hours, taking a few hours after um, the sales started. My eye really, really gravitated towards uh, this Homophilia Bowerbanky, also known as a, just a Bowerbanky coral. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, uh, let's get into so basically the highlight reel of the corals and things and products that got my attention because uh, Reef Palooza Chicago didn't disappoint. So this is a beautiful, like green edged uh, Bauer Banky in the zoanthids.com booth. And uh, one thing that, um, one thing before I continue with all these different tanks is one thing that I'm gonna do for 2020 is I'm really going to bring attention to the coral vendors that come out to these show because they put out a lot of work to have a beautiful booth, great lighting, clear water, happy, healthy corals. So in this video, I don't remember exactly who's who, but next year I'm gonna come up with a system them so I can acknowledge you know these companies that put together a great display and you know one of those companies is uh, zoanthids.com they come to reef stock they come to reef palooza they come to macna and they always just have like this bang and bang and display they don't specialize in anything they do they cover just about everything um, and one of the ways that they make their corals like really crazy popping is by using a ton of Aqua Illumination Soul. Um, I'd like to think that there's actually a special department at Aqua Illumination just to take care of those guys because they're always coming up at the shows with these, uh, you know, kind of this historic display and where most coral vendors are showing up with one spotlight to light up a two by two area. These guys must have a hundred LEDs, um, all individually lensed in six different fixtures across the two by four tank. So swanthus.com, you guys get an A plus on your booth. Um, but not the only ones, I wanna give a shout out to a kind of an up and coming company. This is a, a local company to me, Mile High Tides. Um, they've been kind of slinging some corals through the community channels for a while, but they've just signed a lease on a space that's not that different from the Reef Builder Studio. So we're gonna have Jake over here soon, and um, he's gonna take a look, and we're gonna you know, just chat about some some things that he can pick up for his store, um, just to make it smooth and easy. And so one of the corals that we were talking about in this tank is actually that Acan and Pecky Septa, that orange lobo in the top left, um, recently redescribed. But it's funny how the coral slingers they don't really know taxonomy super hard but they know that if you put that orange lobo next to anything that's not an orange lobo it will sting your scolies it will sting other lobos and it behaves very much like an acan and we're going to talk a little bit more about acans uh, here soon but there's actually a coral in this tank that I picked up this past Saturday from Jake at a Denver aquarium and coral event and uh, also, you know, Mile High Tides has a, has a good connection for uh, Colorado Sunburst enemies, like many other shops in the country. So if you're looking for a Sunburst, you can pretty much cold call just about any store in the Denver area and uh, gonna give it a little love to Mile High Tides. So before I continue, I kind of want to dive into the price of corals because I feel like we have an upside down bell curve. There's definitely a category of corals that are getting retarded, just mind blowing expensive, like these tenuous acros. They are amazing, but when you can start pricing them per small polyp, 
it's kind of crazy. And same thing with the torches. You guys know the torches are going off the deep end, and we're going to revisit that. But on the other side of things, there's also a lot of companies that are putting a lot of effort into providing um, affordable corals. And so no one talks about how many $10, $20, $30 corals they saw at the show. Everybody just kind of gets a sticker shock when they see the multi-hundred dollar uh, single head gold torch. So let's, let's cover both of those. So I don't remember this company, but they were, what I liked about them is they were specializing in the tenuous, clearly. Some of these sticks were a thousand dollars. They all had fancy names. They were 200, 300, 800, but you know, these are like, um, uh, home wreckers, uh, Walt Disney tenuous, uh, lots of more tenuous, and all kinds of goof goofy tenuous names. So I like that this company was specializing in tenuous because it's a fast growing coral and eventually we're all gonna have access to these corals for trade with our friends. Um, yeah, that's, that's enough of them. I don't remember the company's name. I'm so sorry, you know, comment down below on who you were that had those tenuouses. And uh, yeah, here's a beautiful Bauer Banky. That was just totally, totally looking the part. Um, not quite a war paint, not a bleeding apple, but a little bit all over the place. And that was in the zoanthas.com booth. Um, this was also in the zoanthas.com booth. Just, there's red flower pot corals, there's red ganypores, and then there's just like, just glowing like like a red light is on inside of them flower pots. So I love seeing the diversity of flower pots that we're seeing in our aquariums. And then the Symphilia Wilson I, I mean, this is just a coral that it just it really doesn't get old. The only time it gets old <laughs> is when everybody has a fresh crop of them at the same exact time and everybody is trying to get a minimum of like $300 to $500. The $300 Wilson I is like almost gray. It's like calling a $300 Wilson eye gray is actually probably giving it too much credit. And it's like, you can't touch anything in color. Anyway, Wilson eyes, they'll come back down. And it wouldn't be a Reef of Palooza recap or highlight reel if we didn't show you some bounce shroom. It, it just, it doesn't get old. It doesn't get old seeing a bounce shroom single polyp this big with vesicles the size of marbles. Um, so here's a bounce shroom and I'm really glad to see that the coral morph bubble is kind of still going because we have all kinds of different shrooms like this coral, this polyp. I'm not sure if there's actually magic carpet, but this thing was looking, it looked like a carpet anemone. Like it was, it was really, really big, single polyp. And the thing that, that's the thing that's super duper funny is everyone who has these polyps, everyone who has these shrooms. It's, there's always that George Constanza moment. They're just like, I just got out of the pool. The water was cold. You should see the polyp at home. You should see how big it is. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay, we get it. You know, so I think this is a St. Thomas mushroom anemone. It could be confused. It might just be a super whacked out discosoma, but I think it was a St. Thomas shroom. And this guy who would not stop saying how, that this shroom was bigger than the disc that it's on. And I'm just like, we, we, all, we all kind of know this. If I remember correctly, this was the booth at Chicago that had the two birds because I love Indian ringnecks, so shout out to them. And now we're coming to the, the current Bentleys of the reef aquarium world is the torch coral. These torch corals are amazing, but they've always been amazing and lots of props and credit to the gold torch corals. First of all, I don't think you guys really know what you're talking about when you say Australian gold torch versus Indo gold torch because a lot of them will just get long polyps over time and I think over time, those Indo, the, the Australian ones, will, they won't get quite as elongated, but people are just throwing around those names like they really, really know what they're talking about, and I don't think they do, but. So anyway, here's some gold torches. Um, you, you can look at them for free, but they go up to a thousand dollars a problem. Let's, let's, let's take in these prices right here. Take in these prices. On the left are some normal looking Torch corals for $300. Like I know they probably paid, you know, a hundred bucks before shipping from the Australian supplier, but look at that thing, man. It's just a normal torch coral. And then, you know, $800 of $500 for one or two heads. Oh, again, it's that double-edged sword because we know that these grow fast. And the most egregious one on this particular tank was the $1,200 green. It was, it was clearly an Australian torch coral, an Australian gold torch coral. That was basically a green color instead of gold, but they wanted $1,200 for essentially still a green torch coral. All right, enough, enough of that 
complaining about the, the coral prices because we're going to talk about some corals that are actually really affordable prices. Like this booth right here, I really have so much respect for the companies that price corals a little bit more reasonably and a little bit more affordably, accessibly. That's what I, the word I'm really looking for. So four, four corals for $100, all kinds of variety. And special shout out to Goat Corals, greatest of all time corals. I've never seen these guys before, but this is a memo. This is a statement for the coral vendors. The, it is not enough now to have great looking corals and good prices, but when you put a, when you create a really great display around it, like this goat corals guy, um, he has really, really clear labeling, really clear pricing. Don't you just hate it when you walk up to a booth and there's something you like and you have to ask over and over and over again, how much is that? Okay, how much is that? Okay, how much is that? Yeah, does it make you feel good? Like, there's nothing about that that's great when you're getting sized up on the spot about pricing. So, you know, if it's not for sale, like, don't bring it to the show or put it in a separate display tank or, but those ask, those ask prices is not my favorite. So this guy right here, Goat Corals, is the antidote to all that on the fly pricing. Great labeling, great color corals, great size to the corals too. So he had 30, 40, $50 corals, $100 corals. And I'm sure at the end of the show, or if you were buying a few things, this guy, um, uh, would have you know would've done some 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 dealing so um, that's a memo for all you guys to uh, there you go six for a hundred dollars I mean come on like so some some corals are going super duper expensive other corals are getting like pocket change prices you know so there's some room to complain about the super pricey corals but on the other side of the bell curve some corals are really getting a lot, lot, lot cheaper, but nobody's really talking about that. Everybody wants to just complain. So, all right, what else did we have coming up here at Reefa Palooza in Chicago? So, iFrag it always has a zoanthid uh, connection. Uh, again, some pedestrian brands, some some fancy varieties, but there you go, twenty-five dollar frags, five for a hundred. Just my respect for the people that've been doing it a long time that know how to deliver and offer more reasonably priced corals because I mean that's what makes the hobby grow and one last thing one last thing about those torch corals if you really 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 want a torch coral now just buy yourself a single head and you know grow it out but if it's really too expensive every almost every booth at Reef Palooza Chicago had multi hundred dollar torch corals and i'm pretty confident that at the end of the show 80 percent of those torch corals were still there so it really feels like a bubble everybody's everybody's got them right everybody has crazy priced torch corals and everybody has a guy that they can get x amount of money for um but it's a bubble and it's just a matter of time before um the pressure is released all right, totally, totally, totally different topic now is art. We have seen a big rise in art in the Reef Aquarium hobby. Definitely want to get a shout out to uh, Reef Palooza because they have um, really encouraged artists to show up at Reef Palooza. Um, I know they've worked a lot with Rachel Fogel. I know they're one of the bigger patrons because their offices at the new place, I mean, they must have a dozen paintings, you know, from Rachel Fogel. And then their very own Chris. Chris Turnier has been doing his own style of artwork that was featured in this particular booth. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, you've probably heard of Rachel's stuff before, but Chris Turnier, he's doing like a combination of sculpting and painting. So this is a beautiful candy basslet, but these new ones are gonna take it to a whole nother level. These are, uh, I guess he's cutting them down out of uh, tin maybe, or some kind of metal, but he's basically cutting out the tentacles and then painting them like a giant blown up zoanthid thing. Chris Ternier is a great friend of mine. What he's doing with these pieces, like I'm definitely going to get one of these here in the shop. The biggest problem is figuring out if you want an Utter Chaos, a Nirvana, uh, a Rasta Zoanthid, because they're all just totally, totally cool and mind-blowing. So Chris, let's talk about some worldwide corals and uh, one of your original pieces here for the studio. Um, what else? 
Oh, and um, you know, I don't really know uh, Josh, but at the show, um, I got to see him in action and it was really, really cool. I was quite impressed. I really loved seeing him um, just a little bit on his downtime. What he was doing is taking some of his own photographs of zoanthids and then he was painting fluorescent accents onto them and it's hard to describe or capture on video how much emphasis he was placing on getting the fluorescent shades just right. So he had a bunch of acrylic neon, uh, fluorescent acrylic paints right there with him and he was blending them just right. And so that's why when you look at his photographs, they have this crazy, crazy pop. Oh, he's painting over them to almost get a more lifelike appearance of the corals when we look at them in our aquarium environments. Now, Julian has been pushing mangroves. Julian has been pushing mangroves for so long, and I don't know what happened, but for me, something definitely clicked in the last couple of years, probably having the studio and having the space. Um, but he's also just been coming to the shows. You've seen him on other highlight reels. He's bringing these, these bonsai mangrove trees that are starting to pop up at a local fish store, and he's using them to kind of detail and highlight um, his new little Julian tanks, so really shallow cube tanks with the um, uh, Axe Aqua in-out, that's the unique kind of return drain assembly, and then these kind of tangled, twisted uh, uh, stand bases, especially made for these tanks. Really, really cool. I know for sure we're gonna get one here at the Reef Builder Studio, um, and I think it'd be really fun to work with Julian on that one, just to, to create um, a kind of a feature and a focus tank um, that he imagined these tanks being used for. So really cool little little tanks. Can't wait to see those Julians out from Two Little Fishies here soon. Deltec is a brand that really happy to see just kind of making a rebirth, basically a reef aquarium hobby. Their new protein skimmers, um, fabulous, fabulous design. Very awesome to see that manual net cleaner option that's built into the lid. Um, and I haven't had a chance to use those. I'd really like to learn more about the pumps that they put inside of them, because clearly the craftsmanship is top notch, but the pump is the heart of what makes these things tick. So need to learn more about those, but uh, even though I have one of these Deltec Twin Tech calcium reactors here at the studio, I just I still always get a kick of looking at one uh, that's totally new and clean. And uh, that is one of the only products ever that I listed as a product of the year before really trying it out here at the studio. So gingerbread, gingerbread. I don't know what I'm sure. Here's some, some nice corals. Ah, this is what I want to show you. Uh, gingerbread uh, corals, never heard of them, but I love how Lord Corals, a single polyp, can just look like, you know, one of those overpriced Croc Island scolies. Um, Lords are not A-cans. A nay can will destroy a Lord. Please stop calling them a can lords. Just call them lords. And then you will appreciate them for what they are. But man, I just, I love seeing a display of red, green, orange, uh, individual lord frags. Um, here's another company. Like they're almost one of the perfect corals. Right there along with Euphelias. Um, all different colors and patterns and textures. You guys, you guys know about lord corals. Um, this is the mode, not mode, but mod, mod aquariums tank. And he had a couple of things in here that really grabbed my attention especially these uh, Australian trackies are a lot more expensive than Indonesian trackies but um, Indonesian trackies once you get them that's kind of what you get but Australian trackies are really expensive but if you condition them a little bit uh, their colors can really come out in a way like this one right here that's almost black with a beautiful red rim around it that uh, that's I don't know it's just not a, a motif, a color pattern that we're used to with the Indo Lords. So again, like with the, the, the eternal complaint, which these corals were a little bit cheaper because I would have a nice little Australian Trekkie selection. Now this is kind of important. These, this is a real A-can. It's an A-can. We'll just go with Echinata just to keep it. We'll just call it A-can. But here you can see an A-can in Mod's booth that has stung the Favia right next to it and just looks like a little trail of unfocused slime. And you can see how far away it was. It was like an inch away. The A-cans don't care, man. They are vicious. Whether it's the new A-can Pachycepta of the Orange Lobos, A-can Echinata, A-can Hemfreaky, these things are vicious, vicious corals. So 
Um, this is one of the ways like it's super important for people, for us collectively to recognize that these things are different. So this is a beautiful, what I believe is Acan Hemfricki that I got a colony of that you saw in that um, unboxing from the Australian corals, uh, maybe a couple weeks back. Um, this is a frag, it was probably going for real money, but just, I just don't get over neon orange Acan Echinatas whether they're solid orange with black mouths, with green mouths, with splashes, or orange mouth, man, egg cans are my jam. This is a coral mods booth that I definitely would have picked up if I wasn't going to Ecotech Marine right after Repalooza Chicago. This coral right here was talking to me, just kind of an LPS with a couple babies on the sides. Um, really, really enjoyed that piece. These are real egg cans. These are egg cans that will nuke anything that is not an egg can right next to it. So, um, all right. Totally different gears now. This is kind of a double header because it is a tower that was built by Adaptive Reef to hold all the new GHL stuff. And one of the things that really, one of the most exciting totally new products is the Ion Director. It's a multi-part uh, chemistry monitor from GHL that works in tandem with the Doser 2, and it works standalone. You know, there's some companies that are trying to box you into a walled garden ecosystem, like, uh, like Apple with this blue bubbles, um, but GHL is much happier to give you a standalone product that happens to work very well with their other products. So the Ion Director was super cool, and then the presentation of this entire power was really really neat i i just i just love it you guys know with reef builder studio everything's white with blue accents blue trim so um really cool to see that um i would probably build my own but if you're really going all in with like the ghl Prof uh, profilux controller ecosystem you might call adaptive reef and see if they can make you one of those there's a lot of details to it so look it up all right um another really fun trend for me that I really like is white light fixtures. Not white light, but just the fixture itself being white. It's totally cosmetic, it's totally superficial, but besides aqua illumination, all of our fixtures are black. And uh, you know, with so many people, there's communities surrounding, you know, the Radions, the Mitras, the Kessels. Um, it's nice to be able to differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself with uh, slightly different colors. Uh, so, this is the new Kessel white color option, and they've only been showing us off so far on the Planet Tanks. Um, the the light, I think, is a production or pre-production white. The stand and, and accessories and the cable that was actually spray painted white. Um, but one thing that really uh, got me excited is seeing the reflector itself it was molded out of white plastic. So Kessel is seriously uh, looking into uh, creating these white light options. And I'd love to see uh, other companies follow suit. So um, I don't know if you can see it, but right there is a planted tank that has a Kessel A360X. And I would definitely love to replace everything about that with their white version, because I think it looks cool. That's it. <laughs> uh, speaking of white and black lights, this is a, the T5 hybrid fixture from Aquatic Life. Now I know the, the regular hybrid fixture is available in white and black, but for some reason, Michael, David, you're only making the dimmable version in black. And so one thing that's really cool about this particular device is um, they're showing it uh, working with um, one of Profilux's kind of like smaller like light controllers. So you don't have to get a full blown aquarium controller. Um, oh man, I think it's called the Profilux light or something, but it's made specifically for lights. And um, only, only bummer about this light is, is um, it's not dimmable because this level of light, this amount of light might have been okay 10, 15 years ago when everybody was focusing on sticks and had high light tanks. But now that we're going on a lot more blue light tanks, um, if it's not dimmable, you only have that on off option. So um, Aquatic Life, please make your dimmable hybrid fixture in white. Please, pretty please. All right, back to the goodies. This is again my fault. I don't remember who this company was, but it was such a rare treat. 
to check out these tanks that were kind of hidden inside of a booth and see colonies of the pink Cadillac Acro, the PC Rainbow Acro. Um, that's one of the named efflorescence right there. I don't know if it's Greg's or the $500 Eflo, and I don't remember the name of this coral, but it's also, also beautiful. And for those of you, just like the torch corals, for those of you that are seeing these crazy colors uh, in my videos <laughs> or on Instagram, you got to realize that's completely flattering conditions with the yellow filter, orange filter. Um, and some of these acros, like with our high intensity light, you could just bake your own. Just bake your own and give it some time. And a lot of them will develop super awesome, crazy colors. So you don't have to get... What was cool about these colonies is actually the guy was offering these for several hundred dollars, maybe up to 800 or a thousand dollars for the PC rainbow, which is actually quite reasonable when you consider like these corals are usually only available like this big. So really, really cool to see full colonies of these corals um, at one booth. That's kind of surprised that this guy didn't hack them up. All right, back to some dry goods. There's been an explosion of high featured reef aquarium sounds in the aquarium hobby. And uh, finally, we're kind of seeing that attention to detail trickle down to the budget and entry level sumps. So this is ProClear Systems. Um, they've been making like bare bones and kind of, I wouldn't say stripped down, but just elemental and foundational sumps um, that are available under all kinds of brandings. But finally, ProClear is stepping up and coming to the shows themselves. And here you see kind of a range of their own sumps um, showing a range of features. And then uh, moving on, this is the eShops Titan Sump. Um, eShops, I got this thing about like, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? eShops is acrylic smith, and if you make sumps, you, can, you see the need for all kinds of different sumps, and they're not wrong, but they're doing this whole thing with the color series to kind of help people navigate their catalog of different sumps and different sump um, accessories and features. So this is the Titan. Um, I think it's got a gray bottom and all orange uh, sides. Definitely the opposite of my color combo. But it does help you kind of learn or I quickly recognize their different sumps. So this one has some neat features. It's got kind of like a central drain thing with some channeling going underneath like their old uh, cube design. But the thing that I really loved was this tiny little media basket. Um, this kind of a thing kind of pioneered by Intank. Because um, you don't need like a dedicated pressurized canister when you're just trying to run a a little bit of water over some media. So big ups to eShops for including kind of a basic media basket for water to flow through or, uh, because yeah, we just, we just don't need to go crazy with that stuff. So I wanna see a lot more of these little things. Here's, here's an old friend. This is kind of neat because, oh man, tomato clownfish, they don't, they don't really get any love. And this is a guy called the Hockey Stick tomato clownfish. So this guy was collected in the Philippines by RVS Fish World, and I saw him and I wrote about him. If this was any kind of other clownfish, there's no way he would have made it to Reef Palooza Chicago because somebody was scooped him up. But the, the guy was just selling him for only $50, a virtually one of a kind clownfish for $50, a wild type aberration. But I've had an aberrant tomato clownfish. I had the tailless one. They're just too mean. They're just way, 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 way too freaking mean. So, yeah. All right. So now, kind of a silver lining to the uh, the whole coral hype thing. And I want to take some credit, personal credit, for putting gold tip elegance corals on the map because I've been raving about these for over two years since I first went to Australia and saw gold tip elegance coral one in every reef stores display tank. And I've just kept beating that drum with the gold tip, with the orange tip, and some of these other ones. Um, I think Ocean Reefs Marine Aquariums is one of the primary places that collects these uh, gold tip elegance corals. And um, what's the biggest problem with elegance corals? The biggest problem, if they don't live, is that they live too well and they get big and they sting stuff and they swell. I mean, they just really go crazy. So I was really tickled to visit the Tank It Easy booth at Reef Palooza Chicago and they had fragged them. 
and I think this guy told me he fragged them like the day before. These things look like they were fragged, I don't know, weeks ago. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, there's a multi-mouth coral. So as long as you get enough chunk of kind of the central groove, I have never fragged a cold elegance myself, but he's showing off here kind of like the basis. So instead of a single, Elegance Coral selling for upwards of $400. They were offering these gold elegance, gold tip elegance corals for I think like $45. And they might've been another spot that had them for like $75. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of hoping that the gold tip elegance corals will uh, ride the, basically the uh, slipstream of the torch corals. And we're gonna see a lot more propagation of the elegance corals. I mean, it's really cool to just see people cutting them up because they're doing well. And now you can have like a baby or nano elegance coral. Um, really, really cool. And wrapping up, here's some, again, some more of the fragged gold tip elegance corals in the mod aquarium display. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for them, but here's the funny part. <laughs> Here's the funny part. If we only had gold tip elegance corals, we would freak out about pink tip elegance corals. If we only had pink tip, we would freak out about the purple tip. Like I remember that being a thing where we only got like kind of green tentacle or kind of got pink tip uh, elegance corals. I'm talking about late 90s, early 2000s and people would freak out the much fewer reefers that were there would freak out about the purple tip elegance corals. Um, so yeah, it's just funny. Just, just buy what you like. Just keep and grow what you like. And then once again, something that's kind of been overlooked is just regular pink, pink zoanthids. Like, I don't care what they're called, man. You grow them into a small colony. They're just beautiful, beautiful from across the room. You know, I, I'm all about this fragging trend, but there's certain corals that just never get old and are not really rare, like just regular pink zoanthids. Just an awesome coral. And um, a little bit more of the history thing. Like, I don't know what's going on with the pink and red carpet anemones. I remember where I was when I got the call from Sea Dwelling Creatures that someone had discovered a red carpet anemone. And this was probably going on like 12 years ago and just couldn't freaking believe it. That was not on the, the color spectrum of uh, carpet anemones. But now I'm seeing way more red carpets and pink carpets than blue carpets and greens and purples. Um, so yeah, it's kind of an interesting uh, development. Um, if you're in the market for red uh, carpet anemone, definitely shop around because uh, they are quite abundant right now. Again, I'm guilty of not remembering whose booth this was, but they had a clever presentation, the Zero Edge Aquarium. Um, instead of doing the rack, which is really well organized, makes it very easy to find what you're looking for, this tank was a lot more engaging and had you kind of look around to find what you wanted. And I was definitely uh, particular to the Scully with a brighter green center. I've always liked the Scully's with a, a center that pops differently from um, the rest of the disc. So zero edge tank. And uh, yeah, this is just a, a rare look again at a colony. This is a uh, Walt Disney tenuous. I've had some frags of tenuous and I have one that grew out, but I think it grew out as a uh, orange passion tenuous. But when you get these looking good, um, they look like this. Yes, under blue light, but you don't necessarily have to have the orange glasses to really see the full potential. It helps. But this is one of those coral strains that is getting a lot cheaper. You used to not be able to touch a Walt Disney frag nubbin for, for, for a lot of money. And now other tenuous strains are kind of pushing it aside for the better. I love it. I love it. All right. Now we're definitely wrapping it up with kind of a, a little throwback. This was a, I think it's an AquaClear 5000. You know, I always remembered how big and voluminous these these hang on power filters were but i have forgotten just how much water they move there's just like a waterfall of flow um, that's just really really great for a lot of applications so um, if you're in the market for a media reactor you know you could spend uh, 80 bucks 100 200 300 dollars on a very hard to service complicated media reactor that will look kind of nuclear or you can go to just about any store and buy AquaClear of the size that you need that has the built-in pump. I mean, the, the AquaClear 5000, I don't think it's over a hundred bucks. It's probably about 60 to 70. I haven't looked in a long time and you can probably find used ones everywhere for 20, 30 bucks. So definitely consider the power filters um, for your media reactor needs. So big 
Big round of applause to the Reef of Palooza team for pulling off four great events around the country. I was in Australia for the uh, um, California one and adding a new one to the lineup. Um, I think Reef Aquarium events are really a primer you know, for the reef aquarium community overall. And um, yeah, it's just really great to be able to see what different communities and sub-communities are doing um, around the country. And I definitely look forward to visiting more. Big thank you to everyone who says hello and, you know, has some feedback about the, the, the channel at the events. Um, you are encouraged to say hi, take a picture, tell me a little bit about your tank and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this highlight reel of Reef of Palooza Chicago. Um, just as a reminder, the previous video was a tour of the brand new Worldwide Corals uh, flagship Reef Aquarium Superstore. That thing is insane. Can't wait to see what they do with that. And the video before that, I think, was the uh, Versa How It's Made by Ecotech Marine. That is going to be a game changing, uh, category defining uh, product for the Reef Aquarium hobby. So, thanks for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm home for a little while and hope to be cranking the cadence of video releases. So, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, drop a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.